this is my week. Hey everyone, Ryan here. The vlog for this week is actually going to be a pretty short vlog. I'm just going to give my review on The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog. And if you guys have not seen it, there will be spoilers, so I just recommend you uh, hit the stop button if you haven't watched the movie yet, um, if you don't want to hear about it, although I'm pretty sure you all know what knows know what happens if you've read The Hobbit book. Um, but there are some things that uh, you, I probably you don't want to hear about until you've actually watched the movie. So go ahead and just find another vlog to step into and, and not this one yet. But anyway, uh, me and Priscilla saw this uh, the other night at midnight, the midnight showing. And I'd have to say that it was a very good movie. As usual, Peter Jackson has worked his magic in this. Um, it's not going to pertain well to the, to the Lord of the Rings purists. I know I'm technically a, a purist. I like, um, I've, I've read the books, I've read Salmarillion, The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, so I know that universe pretty in depth, and there was, there was a couple things that disturbed me about the film a little bit. I understand the pacing, um, as, as a filmmaker as well, I understand you have to pace the story and keep it as interesting as possible, and I know it's really hard to make 13 dwarfs with a hobbit and a wizard, um, and all the aspects. I mean, everybody's just waiting for the moments like, okay, we just want the battle, we just want the smog to appear in the Battle of Five Armies, and that'll be wonderful. But until that time, you know, we have to we have to watch all this. Now, Peter Jackson still leads us through a very good universe. I love the I love the encounter with the spiders. I love the Mirkwood, how that how that how that was made and put into play. Um, although I really don't like per se. They seem to get lost in Mirkwood pretty quickly, and in the book, they 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 go through some encounters first before actually getting lost in Mirkwood. So I understand. Now this again, this is just me being you know purist. Uh, I understand the pacing. You need to you know get thing. You need to rush things along. So for what Peter Jackson did, um, encountering the, the spiders um, with the the elves, and that's one thing that got, got my gourd is that in the book, Bilbo takes care of all the spiders, and in the movie, uh, the dwar like Bilbo, the dwarves, and the elves all eradicate the spiders, which is just like, no, no, I, I wanted to see Bilbo, you know, kick some butt, really, and he does, don't get me wrong, he does, but it's more, you see him... Uh, rescuing the dwarves, and then he's like having issues like with the ring, and you see how the ring attracts him. And that's one thing actually I like about the film. Um, in the film, um, more so in say like the old animated Hobbit movie. In this film, Bilbo is is you start you see he's starting to become um, attracted to the ring. The ring starting to control him even early on to that time. I mean, Bilbo can still make good decisions and all, but you can tell how the ring is starting to take control of him uh, since um, you have the necromancer aka Sauron arising to power so I did I did like that so we rush into uh, the elven uh, kingdom that's by Mirkwood uh, Legolas's uh, place is his abode where he's the prince and even though Legolas is in the book I liked how they incorporated Legolas in this as well as his uh, quote-unquote uh, girlfriend character I like there, there's like a little elf dwarf uh, love affair going on. I'm not going to say who it was, who it's between, um, but it's a female elf and a male dwarf, and they kind of have a thing going for each other, like at that from that point of the movie until the end, basically. And I know eventually what's going to happen. Um, this certain dwarf is going to die, so I have a feeling that the female elf will die. As well, who's not in the Hobbit either. But anyway, moving on. Lake Town is fantastic. I loved how they have Lake Town just basically in the middle of the lake. Uh, the, the whole geographical setting is wonderful. Um, Bard is is great. Uh, they picked a good actor for him and just him and his family. I, I like the, the Lake Town's master, how they show him as being ultra rich, rich and controlling. It's, it's kind of interesting. Um, so they, they did good with the storyline there and sneaking the, hot, the the dwarfs in first and then the, then you have Thorin um, finally saying, hey, you know, 
I'm here, I'm king under the mountain, and then they get their help. So that, that was cool. There are some dwarfs that get left behind in Lake Town, which doesn't happen in the book, as well as uh, when they actually get to the keyhole in the door. It's not the sunlight. Um, it's not the last uh, su setting sunlight that in which they find the keyhole in. It's the moonlight uh, fr from the day. Because um, apparently they're not going by the time of when the sun when the sun sets, that's when the day is done. Uh, they're going by when it's midnight, I guess, when the day is done. I don't know. So, anyway, now let's get to the good part. The dragon smog himself. Oh my goodness. The best part of this movie is that dragon. And voiced by Benedict Cumberbatch, which is just the most perfect voice uh, for that. And, oh, I, ha I have to say as well, uh, bef before the dragon... Um, you do have um, Gandalf, of course, going on his little journey uh, to the place where Necro the necromancer is at, and he ends up finding that the necromancer is is Sauron, which which I thought is very cool because it links it to the Lord of the Lord of the Rings movies. And even though some people say that didn't happen in the Hobbit book, but it does happen during the events of the Hobbit. There are things if you read the appendices um, from the Lord of the Rings, you find that. Uh, Gandalf does actually take that journey. That's that's where he goes. So that's an that's an essential part of the film. That type of thing, that type of creative li creative liberty, I do not mind as long as it's part of the universe and, and you know what's happening. Just not mentioned in the Hobbit. If it's happening during that time, then I'll by by all means use it to make the story better. But anyway, okay, back to the dragon. I love the way they they make this dragon. He's huge. He's just he he's just oh he's he's just everything that any. Tolkien, Lord of the Rings fan, has ever wanted from this. And I like I, I like the way how, even though this doesn't happen in the Hobbit book, per se, I love how um, the Hobbit and the dwarves end up fighting against this dragon. They end up trying, they make a good effort, and they end up making the dragon really, really mad. And then he ends up flying to Lake Town, and then the movie ends. Right there. So basically... Um, in all the movies I've ever seen, the coldest ending I've ever seen. And the whole uh, the whole auditorium was just like, gasped! And they are like, no! And I actually heard someone say, I hate you, Peter Jackson! And I'd have to say, I hate him and I love him, because he just ended it in the most perfect way to where the dragon's just flying above Lake Town, ready to strike. And we don't see it, we have to wait <laughs> until a year later. So, um, I would say, um, if you're just comparing it from movie to movie, Definitely better than, than the first one, and definitely makes you want to see uh, the final one, for sure, because that's when everything's just going to come to head, and that's when all the action's going to happen. So it, it'll be definitely looking forward to com coming next year uh, to, to see that. But I'd say overall, I'm just going to say I love The Hobbit, I love Lord of the Rings. This movie satisfied me. I, 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 I liked it, loved it. Can't wait to see uh, can't wait to see more. I can't wait to see. Can't wait to see the extended edition. And for anybody who is not like a Lord of the Rings Hobbit fan, might you might judge it differently. But for me, uh, I'd say it was a good evening out, and definitely, definitely love the movie. So anyway, that is the vlog for this week. I know. I'm sorry. Just a review, but it's a review that I'm excited about. So I will see. And by the way, my birthday! Yeah. I'm 31 years old. Fun times. No longer in my 20s. Oh well. Anyway, I'll see all of you next week.